Question 66. First, I will just answer this question, and then I will spend a few minutes underlining the issue of solubility, because this concept uh, rears its head on many of Acer's exams. Okay, so we read the first paragraph, and frankly, no diagram is necessary. <laughs> the first two sentences state that DNA is negatively charged and that PNA is uncharged. And this is all that is required to choose the correct answer. DNA is more soluble than water. That's it. And in fact, even had the charge been positive, that wouldn't uh, change anything. Whether the charge is positive or the charge is negative, that creates an increased attraction to water molecules and therefore it would be more soluble as compared to a molecule that is uncharged. So the diagram itself is completely unnecessary because the first two sentences gave away the answer and you should be able to uh, answer this question in under 25 seconds. <laughs> of course, the image itself does try to emphasize the fact that DNA, um, the double-stranded DNA has uh, twice the number of negative charges as compared to the DNA PNA complementary strands. And thus for question 66, answer choice C, a lower solubility in water for the uh, stranded PNA is definitely the correct answer. Okay, so let's learn something that applies to many other types of questions uh, that could arise during a GAMSAT exam. Uh, of course, we've already talked about solubility in this exam. It comes up on all exams, uh, or usually comes up on, uh, on most exams. So solubility is giving us some information about the extent that one thing, uh, that's the solute, and the solute can be a gas, a liquid, or a solid, the extent that one thing dissolves in another, and that other is the solvent. Of course, solubility is going to depend on the properties of the solute and the solvent, as well as on temperature, pressure, and the pH of the solution. Some molecules are infinitely soluble, so there's no limit on how much one can dissolve in the other. It could also be said fully miscible. And an example of that would be uh, ethanol or ethyl alcohol which of course is colloquially just called alcohol, um, when dissolved in water is considered to be fully miscible. And so of course you've seen 20% uh, alcohol, 40% alcohol, and giving a percentage of volume of the alcohol in water, and there's no issue about dissolving one into the other. On the other hand, you have things that are poorly soluble or emissible, and we saw that word in this exam already. Uh, we discussed it in question 53, and an example of that would be fat in water where it does not dissolve one into the other, and so they actually form distinct layers when you try to mix them. So when considering the question that Acer asked, one of the issues when you're thinking about the solubility of a compound in water is that we have to examine the issue of hydrogen bonding and if there are any uh, free electrons or missing electrons. So basically any issue about charge. The bonding between different molecules is intermolecular bonding as opposed to intramolecular which means within the same molecule. So now intermolecular bonding is so important and the reason is if there was no intermolecular bonding, then all molecules would just be gases, and then we'd be dead. So, Okay, when you look at this diagram, you see that the force is increasing. This is the strength of the attraction between different molecules, and that's starting off very low, and it's ending up very large, and this is hydrogen bonding. It is a very powerful type of intermolecular bonding, and no one does it better than water you see the efficiency. You see that each water molecule can actually hydrogen bond four times. Now, please notice, this bond between oxygen and hydrogen, this bond here, that's a covalent bond. That's not hydrogen bonding. Hydrogen bonding is between separate molecules. 
it is a consequence of the uneven sharing of electrons in the covalent bond. So oxygen being to the right in the periodic table is more electronegative, so it pulls on the electrons more, and hydrogen is more to the left, so it's more electropositive. And it's that differential charge that means that each atom is going to be attracted to an atom in another molecule of opposite charge. And so opposites attract and like charges repel. Hydrogen can do so when it's bonded to oxygen, nitrogen, and fluorine. Some students like to remember FON, F-O-N. And in the DNA molecule you were given in question 66, this is relevant because of oxygen's presence and also because of the presence of nitrogen. And you can see some of the other molecules that can hydrogen bond, including alcohols giving a reason for alcohols to be miscible in water. Whereas in question 66, PNA would be able to dissolve in water because of some delta positive hydrogens and delta negatives, nitrogens and, and oxygens. So it can dissolve in water. But if the charge is greater, whether it be positive or negative, then you will have an increased force of attraction between opposite charges. The diagram also shows dipole-dipole forces, and this is also due to an unequal sharing of electrons in a covalent bond. So here between hydrogen and chlorine, because chlorine is more electronegative, but because chlorine is not as electronegative as oxygen, nitrogen, and fluorine, these bonding between different molecules are not called hydrogen bonds because they are not as strong. Um, you know, water can go all the way up to 100 degrees Celsius before you can break this and then turn it into gas. So that's a tremendous how, how, how much energy has to be given to water. And of course, that permits the existence of, of life. Whereas so many other molecules of the same size as water in terms of molecular weight are actually gases at room temperature, including um, methane, which is a, a gas at room temperature because it doesn't have those intermolecular forces to hold it together in the liquid phase. And speaking of which, we have finally the London forces or Van der Waals forces, which are very, very, very weak intermolecular forces. They are caused by temporary short-lived dipoles, meaning separation of charge. So notice that this occurs also in alkanes. Methane is here, ethane is here, and so alkanes in general. And this sometimes comes up on, on GAMSAT because if you have long chain alkanes, they can pack together nicely and interact more with these London forces. And so they're relatively harder to boil than alkanes that have branches, which can disrupt the normal packing or stacking of the molecules. And so the boiling point becomes lower because there's fewer intermolecular interactions. And so the conversion to gas is easier when there is branching. I also just wanted to remind you of Coulomb's law and how the force between charges that we see here is directly equal to a constant Q1, Q2. That's the amount of each charge. So it's directly related to the amount of each charge. So if you go from something that's partially negative to something that has a formal negative charge, you would have increased the force between charges. And of course, it's inversely uh, related to the distance between the charges squared. So this is a famous inverse square law, just like Newton's law of gravity, where the gravitational force is equal to a constant, m1, m2, the two masses involved, divided by r squared, the distance between the center of masses of the two masses. So I just wanted to show you Coulomb's law again as a reminder that the amount of charge is directly related to the force of attraction between different molecules. And finally, here's your bonus question. So this is a question from one of our Gold Standard GAMSAT courses. So you can take a minute, pause, and consider your response. Then we'll talk about that, and we'll talk about the DNA structure. Okay, so this question is going to be coming up again in uh, the pink booklet, questions 90 to 93. So if you're in the mood, you can go to those questions after you finish this one. And uh, I want you to notice a few things in particular, of course, adenine 
binds to thymine with two hydrogen bonds. Guanine binds to cytosine with three hydrogen bonds. And so it's a classic question um, in biomed uh, to ask about the stability of DNA uh, when there is more G to C bonding. So if you have a greater proportion of the molecule that has G and C, uh, which is guanine and cytosine, that means uh, the molecule will be more stable because the rate of hydrogen bonding will increase. Of course, ACER can't directly ask that question because they know a lot of biomed students have memorized that, but they'll find other ways to uh, test whether or not you recognize uh, the rate of hydrogen bonding can actually increase the stability of a molecule. The other things uh, you might want to notice about this is the anti-parallel nature of the binding, because this comes up in, in uh, pink uh, booklet questions 90 to 93. And so you see that one goes from 5 prime to 3 prime, the other one goes from 3 prime to 5 prime. So it's not exactly parallel. If they were both oriented in the same direction, that would be parallel. So it's anti-parallel. So they're sort of parallel, but moving in opposite directions. And in terms of the 3 prime, 5 prime, you can see that for this sugar here, which is ribose, you could, deoxyribose, uh, you can see that nitrogen is bonded to one carbon here. That's carbon one, carbon two, carbon three. So this is three prime carbon. Carbon three, carbon four, carbon five, which is this elbow here, carbon five. So that's the five prime uh, phosphate group. So that's why this is on the five prime side of the uh, deoxyribose, and this is on the three prime side. And finally, when we're talking about normal uh, pH and DNA denaturing, which denature means not the natural state, and so right now we're looking at the natural state. So when um, hydrogen bonds are broken, for example, because of temperature or pH, for example, then that could denature a protein or DNA molecule or anything such as that. So the question is asking about raising the pH. So right away, you should have it very clear in your mind. Low pH means high hydrogen ion concentration, means you will have the protonated form of whatever it is. At a high pH, you have the deprotonated form. And that means, uh, of course, protons are being removed because it's a more basic environment. And so the idea of uh, answer choice B or answer choice D is not to be considered because this is uh, something that you would be thinking about when the pH is very low. That's when you get protons adding or binding. So we want to see protons dissociating. Answer choice A tells us protons dissociating from the phosphate groups, but you, there are no protons uh, bond to the phosphate group. And not to mention, even if it, that had been the case, which is not, because we could see it plainly right in front of us, um, then it's still part of the backbone. It's not what's holding the DNA strands together. So anyway, it's very clear that if protons dissociate, you know, for example, from the guanine bases, and therefore you don't have that delta positive hydrogen that can hydrogen bond with something that is delta negative on the other side, like oxygen or nitrogen on the other side. That would disrupt the hydrogen bonding pattern and the molecule will no longer be in its natural state. It will be denatured. So for question number 25, the answer is C. And from the book, you can read uh, about hydrogen bonding and other intermolecular bonding in chemistry 4.2. Organic Chemistry 12.5 for Phosphates and DNA, and Biology 1.2.2.